Hello and welcome to a much teased yes. but finally here um, special edition of Dinner Plus Drinks podcast. We are joined by Lauren Mack, the proprietor of Sipes Brewing. Is that the best way to describe? <laughs> do you like proprietor or what do you like? Yes, I think proprietor sounds good. I haven't heard that one before. I we think queen also... of. Queen of, queen that's of. a good one. <laughs> sounds good. Yes, proprietor, <laughs> perhaps. Yeah, great. Any of these names. So I'm so excited to have Lauren on. As you know, I love beer. Um, if you've listened to more than like 10 seconds of this podcast, um, I, like also, drinks. <laughs> I also love history and I love like Geneva. And the super awesome thing about Sipes Brewing is if you've ever seen Black Point on Lake Geneva, which is one of the most historic estates, um, the only estate that is open to the public that you can go on a boat and tour it. I know this sounds like lame, but it's really cool. Dave, the guy that runs it currently, is mostly okay. So it's a really (laughs) cool thing. (laughs) Shout out, Dave. But Black Point was built by a man named Conrad Seip and his family. He was a beer baron in Chicago back in the 1800s. One of the biggest beer brands in the world that, or America, which may as well be the world, America. (laughs) Oh, Um, You've probably never heard of it because it went under, um, as many breweries did during Prohibition. But Lauren is the direct descendant of Conrad and uh, has brought back the brand, building, uh, building it back up, brewing a beer that is authentic to the original recipe. And so we have this awesome intersection of delicious beer. Yep. Lauren's really cool. She's great. Head muffs, Lauren. <laughs> Ear muffs. Um, and Lake Geneva. Lake Geneva. Yeah. So that's why we wanted to talk about it. So welcome, Lauren. That was a lengthy introduction, but I just want to make sure everyone understands this is super cool. So thanks for being here. Yes, yeah, <laughs> is what we're for saying. Being here. I'm so, so delighted to be here, uh, especially um, on this great summer uh, morning, afternoon yeah. almost. It's not painfully it's, hot out yet. <laughs> no, no, it's a good day for a beer, in fact. Exactly. I think it is. What, what day isn't, though? <laughs> so, Lauren, can you just give us a brief introduction to who you are and really, how did you figure out you were related? Did you always know you're related to Conrad Seip? And, like, how did you just decide that, you know, my great, 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 whatever grandfather made some beer and I should do this, too? Like, Tell us about yourself. It's a, it's a great question. It's uh, a broad question. Am, it's not a great question. It's a perfectly good question. I am I'm Conrad Sipes' great, great, great granddaughter. Okay. And I've always known that because um, our family takes history and our, our whole family near and far very seriously. In addition, I grew up, I've come to... Um, what is now the Black Point Estate. We call it the big house in our family. (laughs) For the past 41 years of, oh gosh, I shouldn't have said that. (laughs) That's how old I am, everybody. Years. (laughs) Some years we've been coming. Many years. I have come every summer to visit my family, specifically my grandparents and my great aunt and uncle, um, Jane and Bill. And um, you can't be at Black Point, as those of you who visited, without um, feeling Conrad safe. Um, He built the house with his wife, Katerina, in 1888 for his family to enjoy and to be able to get out of the um, hot and probably pretty polluted and crowded Chicago. (laughs) What? Maybe still the same. I don't know. (laughs) In the summer of Corona, this feels very timely. Yeah. (laughs) So so I've always always known about Conrad Seip because I knew that he built this beautiful place for his family. I didn't understand because I was young and I didn't really know what beer was and I didn't really understand brewing history. But as I, as I became an adult and I became an age and started drinking beer myself, I started to think, oh, wow, how cool. This, this ancestor of mine who I knew as, as a sort of benevolent force in our family's <laughs> life uh, became, was able to, to build this house because he made a whole lot of beer. And I started to learn more about beer history and and brewing history in Chicago and how fundamentally intertwined it was with the development of the city. Um, and so then it just started to, I started to become very interested in Conrad, I, I think because I started to understand how, how important he was. And frankly, everybody is important, but I guess what I mean to say is how important he was to beer history, specifically sure. yeah. in Chicago and the Midwest. Yeah. It's so, I didn't know anything about any of this to be 
frank with you. I like beer, but Nick knows far more about all of this. So he said, we're bringing in this beer. Like, can you meet Lauren on the dock and grab, grab a beer? I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, I didn't expect you to be like the person, the queen of the beer. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's delivering beer. Okay. And so I've been learning really just in the last couple of weeks about it. And I think it's so great, which is why we wanted to share it with everybody. So again, we're just really excited. <laughs> so can you give us a little backstory about exactly what Site Brewing Company was at its height and what Conrad brought to beer? Because he made some pretty major innovations that... You're like, oh yeah, anybody would have figured this out, but <laughs> nobody did until Conrad. Yeah, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind is not only did Conrad make a lot of beer, but um, he made a lot of beer in a, in a pretty difficult time to be doing anything. So he was a German immigrant, um, came over um, at the end of the <coughs> 40s, the 1840s, and made his way to Chicago. And in 1854, he opened a brewery and um, started making beer and s continued to make beer. And, and it was a difficult time. Um, we were going through things like the Civil War. We were going through big, big, um, not super friendly relations between immigrants and people who were already yeah. living in America. Um, we were going through things like um, the Chicago Fire. <laughs> and that's actually oh. one of the things that... That little thing. <laughs> that was actually, I think it's important to recognize that in life, success is maybe equal parts skill, mm -hmm. uh, hard work, certainly those things um, Conrad Seip had and, and did. Um, but it was also, it's also luck. And he was one of the breweries, brewery was one of the breweries that did not burn down during the Chicago fire. So when yeah. everyone else was out yeah. of commission, he was able to make a lot of beer to to feed the workers, um, frankly, who are coming to, to build Chicago, what, what is present day Chicago. That's why we're calling um, Sipes Beer the beer that built Chicago, because it oh, was. That's um, cool, I didn't realize really that, cool. yeah. And so I think it's just important to realize that, I mean, so not only was just on the national landscape so much happening that was really hard for the nation, but also just on a personal level, it was really hard. Imagine being an immigrant, arriving in this totally new place, not really probably speaking English terribly well, not really knowing very many people. Um, and then his first brewery that he built just burnt down and mm. he lost several children in infancy and oh. he lost his first wife. Um, so, so this was tough. And I think yeah. that's something that I always, you know, when I, when I'm feeling stressed or tired or not strong enough to be lifting all those cases, <laughs> yeah. <that> I, <laughs> to like the country. I just think, you know, I, I try and just channel Conrad and think I just have to work hard and I, I've got to um, just sort of keep going forward because that's what he did. And I, and I think that's what we all do is we're trying to build stuff. That's so cool that the history, that your family finds it so important. I just, my parents are like just kind of getting into their ancestors a little bit more and they're so, so interested in it. So I love hearing that you guys, it sounds like your whole family finds it very important and that's, that's valuable. I'm so glad that you brought that up because that's one of the things that I think is so important about, it's one of my motivations for bringing back the Sipe beer brand is that it's been so great as a way for me to connect to my history and to better understand myself and where I came from. But it's really about everyone connecting with their own history, yeah. better understanding yeah. themselves, being able to connect with other people over a beer. Um, so I'm hoping that as I'm learning about myself and my own history that, that others can do the same. Um, and, and feel that. more connected. That is cool. And that's, I mean, that's really what our whole podcast is about, like connecting over food and drink. Like, what do you talk about over food and drink? So that was a great little plug. Good job. <laughs> talk about yourself. Talk about your own history. Talk about your out. own connection to your own place. Oh. Well, I like beer. I like beer. <laughs> um, what I like about beer is it's like a super democratic drink. I, yeah. there's a lot of people that want to charge. I like wine probably more than I like beer. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that think, you know, beer should be on the level as wine and it should be the same as wine. And I think that's unfair because yeah. wine, it's a thing that grows, it's an annual crop that grows specifically one year at one place. Um, and it's a little bougie, you know, let's not, let's <laughs> More not. More bougie than beer. Like it's bougie, <laughs> but beer it's, you know, malted grain, yeast, water, hops. It's four ingredients that you can make anytime, anywhere. And it's the thing that 
you come in after a hard day's work, maybe rebuilding, and it doesn't matter if you're the CEO of a company or the mm-hmm. entry level person, you walk into a bar, you do a little cheers and you both can say, take that first drink of a beer and say, ah, this <laughs> exactly. is refreshing. And that's what I love about beer. That's why I think like, that's well put. Alcoholic drinks are important <laughs> because as much as I love, Community. we're yes, trying to get we're. bubbly to sponsor us. So we're going to, you know, <laughs> we actually just drink like, Five of these a day, each of us. Um, so, <laughs> as much as I love my sparkling water and it's very refreshing, yes. it's not as good as a beer. Not the same. So, um, that's what I love about beer, and I just I think history is important. Yeah. Learning things. I so um, before my previous life, before Lake Geneva was in Milwaukee for eleven years, and for me, I I didn't always like beer, so I was like hard alcohol person for a long time. <laughs> um, then I love wine. You know, cherry, black cherry UV. Oh God, you know, the good stuff. <laughs> um, but I, in my time growing up in Milwaukee, I always say like I watched Milwaukee grow up. Um, I, my childhood years were in Lake Geneva, but I went to college in Milwaukee and then stayed there and did all of my like adult growing up there. And I feel like I grew up with the city. It was when Milwaukee was originally not really looked at as very good it was like dirty and not chicago so but now over the over the years and to this day milwaukee's become a destination all the breweries in milwaukee so i have a very very good friend that's involved pretty heavily involved with the beer scene in milwaukee and so through him i've gotten to know a lot of the people i helped decorate one of the breweries in milwaukee i helped get some events running for one of the breweries in milwaukee so i've gotten to know the culture in milwaukee and all the people that do it and they're just good people like everyone i meet for the most part, in that scene, um, it's just good people, and they make good beer. And, and I think it kind of goes to what Nick's saying: it's like a level playing field, and everyone's just there to enjoy the good beer. <laughs> I think that's yeah. the cool thing about beer too: is it's such a individual expression of personality. And with with wine, um, you have to take what the grapes give you sure. a little bit, a lot bit, if you do it well. <laughs> but with beer, you can force yourself on the product a little bit and put your stamp of what you want with how you brew it, what your grain bill is, how you treat the yeast, that type of thing. So how did you go from like, enjoy, like you said you like, you grew up as an adult, you started liking beer, but like, were you a beer nerd? Is that like- Did you always like beer? Or was it just, yeah, like what, how did you go from like, okay, the big house was built by beer, Like, you know, there's plenty of people that grow up in butcher shops and turn out to be vegetarian as like a rebellion (laughs) thing. But like, how did you go from like, I like that Conrad brewed beer, got the big house to like, "Ah, I'm going to, I'm going to do this myself. How, yeah. Did you just always have an interest in that or how'd that work? I I am not and have, I'm not a beer nerd, though I do love beer nerds. I will (laughs) say they are a fantastic group of people and I love learning from them. And that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to, to bring back the Sipe brand is because I think that Sipe is great for, and I, I say this, is I think that it's really a purple, it's, it's purple for everybody um, mm-hmm. in that the beer nerds can say, wow, this is a delicious beer and it's so cool that it's got such an interesting history. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then also people who just want to drink beer on their porch can also say like, wow, this is really crisp and delicious. Yum. I, think that's I like the I label. When I first had it, I think I was like, this is a beer everyone would like. Yep. I think your I husband think- said, I could drink like seven of these. Yes. <laughs> that was my husband. <laughs> He's very I've, I've heard that. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Tyler. <laughs> I've definitely heard that from others, and it's always nice to hear that people would, would like to um, be willing to even drink that many if Yes, he tall. would. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you, though. <laughs> so, um, so you have been learning from them. Yeah, what made you kind of make the, make the dive into doing this? Like, what was the... So, I mean, you all know how everything takes a while. All, all ideas um, percolate, and then you actually have to figure out how to make that thing happen, and then you have to make the thing happen. Yep. And so I, we've been thinking about this, um, my husband and I, for a long time, I'd say like 10 years. And it started wow. actually in Richmond when I was um, in graduate school. And we had some friends and some neighbors who were about to become professional um, brewers, um, but they were still sort of brewing out of the backyard at that point, out of the backyard. Did you tell them that your great-great-grandpappy had been brewing since before they were even <laughs> yeah. a, a and they were the, 
So oh, they well, perfect. about him. So that was good. And um, <laughs> you never know about Conrad Seip. He has not been lost to history completely. Excellent. Um, so they were just like, yeah. And so we thought it'd be really fun to just experiment around and see if we could figure out some general idea of what one of these may have tasted like. And we came up with one that, that tasted great. And it was, it was sort of the first time we were like, whoa, this is... <laughs> This is good. (laughs) We can do this. But then it took a really long time to get from there to, you know, Conrad's site in a six pack. Yay! (laughs) And I will say that I I think I call my, um, I call her my beer uh, guardian angel, Liz Garibay of the Chicago Bruseum, who is an expert. just an expert and a wonderful person, expert on Chicago brewing, on, on all things related to beer. Um, she's starting, started already a, um, a museum dedicated to brewing history in America and, and beyond. And it's going to be um, located in Chicago, it already is. She came up to the big house or the Black Point Estate, met with the infamous Dave DeSimone. <laughs> And, Dave, and <laughs> you owe us like so much money for how much nice things we're saying about you on this <laughs> And he, he put me in touch with, with Liz, who at the time was um, doing an uh, exhibit for the Bruseum at the Field Museum in Chicago. Oh, nice. I met her, and she just really connected me with people, including um, Doug and Tracy Hurst in Metropolitan Brewing, which is you guys, I'm sure, had their beer. Um, I think the best... Um, German style brewers in Chicago and beyond. They're really, um, really amazing people and also just make excellent, excellent beer. So it was in that, as soon as I met them, I was like, I love these people and I really like their beer. I hope they like me and I hope they're willing to help me. And they did. That was good. Good. So yeah, that's who you've partnered. That's your brewing partner. For those of you that don't know. Yep. So you're not like, you don't have big beer vats outside your house and you're not just, you know. Not doing no. it in the bathtub. <laughs> I don't. And for anyone who hasn't been to Metropolitan, it's a really gorgeous space. They have a tap room, really safe outdoor seating. Um, it's just a, a great place to go and drink a beer. That's great. And so speaking of speaking of drinking a beer. <laughs> speaking of this beer. I think it's a good point in the podcast <laughs> to actually open the beer and talk about the beer. And what then we can go beer. into um, how you, I wanted to ask you about Metropolitan and like yeah. why they're a good fit for you. And a little bit more of that. But Bridget, first, we have to cheers. <laughs> yes. This is a staple on our podcast. You have cheers. to hear a clink. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Oh, you. cheers. <laughs> and great beer. Lovely. So you have this labeled as Sipes Extra Pale, a pre-prohibition Pilsner. Yes. So what does that mean? Because <laughs> I think a lot of people hear Extra Pale and they think it's going to be hoppy. They think it's going to be an ale, which is one of the tricks that we didn't mean to play on people. It just happened to be the name of his beer. So we didn't have a lot of wiggle room with that. Um, Conrad Seip had a lot of different brands and his several. I mean, so this is an important distinction for people that might not be super into beer. So in the beer world, like you think of Miller Genuine Draft, Miller High Life, Miller Light. You'd say they're just different products within the Miller brand. However, in the beer world, you call each one of those a separate brand. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's like, so Extra Pale is a brand, a Doppelbox a brand, a Plain Lager is a brand. So that's like a key distinction that I think a lot of people yeah. don't understand about beer know. is you just call different products brands instead of a huh. different product. That makes sense. It's very confusing. I have a friend that sells yeah. beer from other cores and I was like, that's how he speaks. I never fully yep. understood it. Okay, great. It's a weird. Sorry, like, that's a good thing distinction about beer. <laughs> Go on. Stick around. You can set us straight on all this stuff. <laughs> um, so we chose the extra pale. When I say we, I mean um, Metropolitan, me, and then Liz Garibay because she's um, so important um, in, for all reasons. So but her history of knowledge, her knowledge history, is so helpful for us as we proceed. Proceeded. Um, and we decided to choose the extra pill because we knew that it was um, going to be to what we've been talking about. It was going to be um, and easier and easier to drink. And it was also really interesting to see what a pilsner would taste like before prohibition. Um, now we yeah. often think of American loggers like Miller, like Budweiser, and and they have a, a 
specific taste and sort of a specific reputation. And we wanted to think, huh, what would this have been like before? I mean, Conrad Seip had no idea prohibition ever would have come. Thankfully, he died before it happened. Otherwise, I can only imagine what he would have thought. Um, but when, when Germans came to America, they brought the lager um, way of brewing with them. And in about around the 1850s in Chicago, Pilsner from Pils and uh, Czech Republic became very popular across Europe. And Americans were like, we want to make this too. But they were using a different kind of barley. This is starting to get into the beer nerd world. So sorry. Okay. For we too. hope some of them are listening. <laughs> <laughs> we were using six row barley, which has got a lot more protein in it than the um, barley that they were using in Europe. And so the Americans were like, shoot, we've got to figure out how to make this delicious Pilsner beer, but we don't have quite the right ingredients. So they added some corn to lighten it up. And that's where the original adjunct beer oh. comes from, is sort of our attempt at making a Pilsner that is as delicious as was coming out of of Europe at that time. And that's the pre-prohibition piece is that in this beer, in the Sipes Extra Pale, we are using six row barley and we are using um, corn as a way to, to lighten it up. And you can taste it when you- yep. um, Ooh, Now that I know that. Yeah. When a you little bit it, of sweetness is just- A little bit of sweetness, yep. yeah. So is this um, logo, label, branding, historical? Did you come up with that? What, what's yeah, the it's that? very- very much historical. Did you get off of Canva? <laughs> did, did you just design it in Canva? <laughs> I, I definitely just... It was a template. <laughs> we, we worked with several designers who really were um, big fans of history. And um, the final label was designed by the Stout Collective in Chicago. Oh, sure. Basically, we took the old um, Extra Pale... And there were several iterations of Sipes Extra Pale labels. I chose the one that I liked the best. Yeah. Um, which was um, what he advertised at the World's Fair, or his company um, advertised at the World's Fair in um, 1893. And we basically just lifted that and made it um, appealing to the modern eye. Sure, because sure. Because we, we live in 2020, and we want to be able to see things and, and like things now. It's not all about everything mm -hmm. just being really stuck in history it's about mm -hmm. connecting to history and enjoying yourself today but it it does exactly that so yeah. good job it you know it feels historic but still interesting you know like I, the color choice is great i just obviously you chose professional people to do it well done those people and you <laughs> was the recipe you talked about the barley and the corn did you have like as you're digging through the, the big house did you find like conrad's secret recipe um or how did you come up with the recipe <laughs> I am not giving up on that because we're always finding random things in drawers um, around Black Point for sure. But um, we, we're not using the exact recipe. And frankly, the recipe probably changed a lot over yeah. from 1854. And I, I don't think he necessarily was brewing extra pale right when he started brewing beer. But until 1933, it, it probably did change a lot. I also think he was working with a lot of German brewers and he himself was a German brewer. Um, they didn't necessarily need to write down a perfect recipe. They just like, you Little know, like this. a grandma do. Yeah. <laughs> you know how to That's make beer. Mom cooks. Okay, totally. That's what I love. I love about read like historic cookbooks. And we did a thing about yes. um, some of the African-American cookbooks that get uh, overlooked a lot. And one of my favorite ones just takes all these recipes from, you know, pre-antebellum America that are like, uh, hog's head of pork skin. And you're like, what? I don't know what any of that That's means. That's not a degree that we can get, really, and it's not a measurement we use anymore. It makes it, like, something that's – I think that's so important to, like, yes, we want to be authentic, but also – We need a recipe. We need – this is 2020. We don't have – all of these weird Long things time. floating around. And <laughs> well, that'd be awesome if you find like his secret post-it with the recipe <laughs> written So down. stay tuned because it's still possible that it'll show up. But I will say in the meantime, it's been nice to just A, go on the historical adventure of trying to figure out what, what it was. And also we're working with um, his primary ingredient, which was the water from Lake Michigan. And we still are using that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and I think that it's probably a lot cleaner now than it was in 1870. So We're doing um, great so far. <laughs> you know, maybe you should do a batch where you reverse osmosis it to, like, there's got to be some historic record. Let's go beer nerd. 
So a lot of the beer gets, you know, reverse osmosis to make water be what you want. You want your water conditioned differently for a hoppy beer than a lager or a stout. So there's probably like climate change data about the oh. what the water was like in 1860. <laughs> Maybe you could wow. reverse osmosis the water to that and make side-by-side oh. -side batches. That is a great idea. We're Sounds definitely like we doing run. that next. <laughs> yeah, this is next on the list. Good. I mean, to your, to your point, I love that you're thinking in sort of the super science-y way because we actually have some Thank unopened you for calling it science and not geekery. Okay, well. <laughs> that was thoughtful. Well, science and geekery. We actually have some unopened bottles of, of old site beer. Oh, well, that's and awesome. It's been so great bringing this back because so many people have been have contacted me already, and I hope so many more people will in the future with things like, "Oh, I just found in my mom's stuff an unopened bottle of blank, uh, you know, malt sinew," or mm. um, "Here's mm. this cool old label that I found that's still perfectly preserved." So I'm learning so much as we go with this project, which is why I'm so appreciative to the whole community for being part of it. I've got to say, um, we just it. ripped a giant bush out of our yard, and there was definitely, like, beer bottles and, like, old we'll cans in there. I'm going to check it out and see if there yes. happens to be. <laughs> we just put them in the recycling, so I'll take a look. I do yeah, remember. No I'll dig, dig in the trash for you. <laughs> Dave had me over to play some billiards on Conrad's table the one day. He's like, oh, yeah, there's one of the only remaining unopened bottles of site beer. I'm like... I'm not very good at this. There's a distinct possibility I might break that. Ah, fine, fine. <laughs> big deal. Like, Dave, I don't think you understand how bad I am at this game. <laughs> you made it through unscathed. So it's did the fine. bottle. Hopefully. We've made it to today. So have you thought about making more brands? Doing uh, yeah. I, uh, Twitter follower Jim picked up some of the beer on uh, earlier this week and said he really enjoyed it, but it's looking forward to the Doppelbach. So oh, what about um, doing uh, more brands? Yeah, for sure. We are starting with the Extra Pale um, because it's delicious and it's mm -hmm. um, great for drinking in the summer, all, all year round, but yeah. especially in the summertime. But I, we're definitely excited about trying um, to see what some of the other ones were like. And stay tuned. They'll be coming out um, hopefully sooner rather than later. So um, We will try them. <laughs> okay. So when you come up with that, obviously Metropolitan's your, your brewing partner. How does that discussion go? Like, how do you interact with them and say, we're thinking about doing this? How much input comes from you? How much comes from them? You talked about museum. How much comes from them? Like, how, do, how does that process work? It's a total team effort, and everyone works really well together, which is great. Doug Hurst, who's the co-founder and the CEO, just knows so much about German brewing techniques and, and historical brewing techniques. Um, so it's just really fantastic I think there obviously really benefits from, from his knowledge. Um, and then we also have, have Liz Garibay and then me, which is I'm able to bring the, the historical aspect of just sort of labels and all of the, the um, research that I've done and, then, and that Liz already just knows from being a historian. So we really just work together and, and come up with, with these ideas. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we bring the designers in to make the, the labels look just as historical but, but sort of snappy as, as possible. Very much a team effort that it should be. What I have heard the couple times that we've talked about uh, Metropolitan here, I've heard a lot of female names come up, which I'm super <laughs> excited about. So as far as I know, and I, you know, I'm not by any means an expert on the brewing world, but there's not a ton of female owned breweries or women involved in it. So I'm super excited to hear that like you've partnered up with, it sounds like at least three people, three women and Doug. Um, but tell me about yeah. that. Like, was that definitely a factor in your decision or just a happy circumstance? Cause I am thrilled about it. <laughs> I will say that um, I have often wondered, I come from a family of very strong women, and I've often wondered um, what would have happened if it had been appropriate or, mm. or just if one of, of Sipe's daughters or granddaughters had taken the business over, yep. um, which they certainly could have, but for many reasons didn't. Um, and so it's really very rewarding as one of his female descendants to be bringing back um, the families to his beer. Yeah. Um, and then to be able to work with um, Tracy Hurst, who's the president and co-founder of Metropolitan, um, is, is just really gratifying. Because you're right, there, I, from the, as I'm learning, there really are not as many um, females in the brewing industry, which 
you know, we're, we're working on and, yeah. and is what it is. But it, it is really great to be able to work with other really fantastic yes. people and women like Tracy and, and Liz Garibay. Mm. And I didn't know. Other- I, I had n- known about Metropolitan, but I didn't know about Liz as well. That just ups the cool factor. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I mean, because- you are being very modest about this. And yeah, it's that, a big deal. It, yeah, I think it's a huge deal, especially right now. And I want to shout it from the rooftops for you. So yeah. congratulations on partnering with some great people. Craft beer is a bit of an echo chamber in terms of um, demographics in many occasions. And it's a challenge. And I think it limits what craft beer can explore. And it's something that a lot of the discussion around craft beer from people actually love it and want to keep growing, sucking about is we need some diversity and we need some um, differing viewpoints and we need some people to challenge us. And one of that is that, I don't want to say difference or divide, but men and women often bring different perspectives to things and having um, that balance and that difference of viewpoints is so important. So that's one of the things I like too, is trying to, we're, we're a female majority owned business. Um, You know, my grandma kept the business running for 20 years after my grandpa died and it handed off, you know, and we couldn't have done it without her. So it's like seeing that continue to go is so important to me. And I think towards beer lovers everywhere, if you really care. Yeah, if you, I mean, or if you care. Or if you just yeah. want the same old thing for always, then, <laughs> then yeah, you're whatever. whatever. So you mentioned earlier, like, you learned a lot from Conrad as far as hard work. He endured a lot of challenges. Do you have, like, a turning point or a major challenge that you faced that, like, you're like, yep, this was the big deal, or just lots of little challenges? Or tell us about a couple of the hurdles. Yeah, I will say that there's – there's just not enough time in the day. One, that's just a daily challenge. What? Um, I, I, as you all know, um, uh, life goes fast and there's a lot to do. And yeah. so that, that is a constant challenge, which is a challenge that we can all rise to meet. Yep. Um, I think another challenge was we, had, we didn't know that COVID was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was a surprise for, um, for us, for sure. Um, unexpected for everybody. Yeah. Um, and we, we delayed launching um, yeah. for several months as a result, which... Um, well, I think the first time we met was like the day before St. Patrick's Day or something. Which and, was right when this all shut down. And we're like, yeah, <laughs> we're going to do like a big lawn party in June to launch the beer. Exactly. exactly. Here we are in ju- the end of July. <laughs> Little did we know. And, and it did really change our launch plans. But yeah. that's okay. Life, life does not work out how we all plan for it. And I think that um, as long as everyone is safe and um, we are all taking good care of each other, I think that we can um, proceed with, uh, with launching SIPE in a, in a good way. Yeah. And, um, a little bit, you know, we're saying if we waited 87 years to bring this brand yeah. back, another two months isn't going to hurt anybody. Hey, that's a good yeah. point. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, and to that point, you've sold out of your first run pretty fast. Yes. Which is awesome. I mean, it's a problem, but, but it's awesome. a good problem. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I so much appreciate that. And I will say it, it is a problem for me because I really want people to be able to drink our beer. And it is so exciting that people um, have enjoyed it so much and the demand has been so great. And I'm really, really appreciative of that. And we are making beer as fast as we can. It takes 28 days. So we were not expecting to sell, sell out at the brewery within 10 days, but Oh, that's um, great. That's amazing. It, yeah. it is still out in the community. Um, so you can, um, if you have in, like Geneva. Parts of three cases left. Okay, good. Parts of. Not <laughs> three, good. parts of. How about you go on a treasure hunt and leave a comment and let us know where you find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that you can find it at like Geneva Country Meats because that is one of the few places that um, you can get it right now on retail in the Lake Geneva area just because of supply it yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and you got a lot of really cool tap line placements too right yeah absolutely i'm happy to to go through the places you can go and sit down in a Please nice outdoor area we'd yeah. love to hear <laughs> and so uh other than the retail stores which um include places like the green grocer over in williams bay yes. um includes the walworth sellers um includes you all um the uh River Valley Ranch had it for a time. Oh, no. Um, that is we so are, fast. Yeah. 
we are also um, selling it for in, in more of a, an on-premise way um, at Kim Casey um, Pub in Fontana at yep. Pier 290. Um, we are selling it at the Baker House. It's actually going on draft there. Um, that is a good place to have it. I mean, it just, they, right, you know, yeah, the historical perspective. Perfect. Big old, yep. big old yep. Victorian houses yep. built around the same time, and it, it's such a great spot. Um, That's great. Courtney at the Baker House has been a, a great advocate. Um, I know that I'm uh, in the Owl. Who can forget the Owl? The Owl, the <laughs> Yacht Club, <laughs> right? They are uh, they are fantastic and are and are carrying it just on the same block as Black Point. Yep. Um, I'm the sure. Yacht Club, did you say the Yacht Club? Right. The Yacht Club, of course. Yep. And then again, you know, Conrad big into the boats. And some other private clubs as well. Yeah, Conrad certainly uh, had a family full of people who liked boats, so yes. that makes sense. <laughs> wow, so I didn't realize it was on tap lines at that many places. That's great. I will say it's actually really only on tap um, right now at the Baker House. It will be today and then um, at the Yacht Club okay. um, as well, and then as another private club as well. Um, the As soon as we can get some more beer up here, we'll get some more of yeah. it on tap. Well, good. And I'm we're so hoping happy. to be able to put together some sort of event where you can have it on top. Yeah. Because uh, draft is going to be, I think, where the beer, like, it's good in bottle. Yep. I, I really enjoy it. But I think draft, it's really going to shine. And it is delicious on we're top. We're working on yes. some Maybe we'll have to hit snack up house. to go with, uh, with the beer. So yes, we hopefully are. hopefully we'll have something coming up soon. Oh, that would be you, great. Because you're awesome. Yeah. I started this whole thing when I, again, I didn't know. I thought it was just like meeting this person named Lauren on the dock. And, and I, I was like, okay, Nick, I met Lauren. I'm like, she's just lovely. And oh. so you are, you've been a delight and your beer is delicious. So I'm so happy to have met you and run across you. And I can't wait for people to experience and learn about it. Oh, well, that's so nice. And I feel so honored to be at Lake Geneva Country Meets. It's been such a foundation of our community for so long. And you. man, you guys can make a brat that you can all <laughs> a brat. So it goes really well with sites for sure. Perfect. Sounds <laughs> like a good summer night to me. <laughs> so I got one last question for you. Let's just wrap it up. You talked about it's important to have that conversation, look back to what was before, you know, prohibition, things have changed. If you had to explain you know, in just basic terms, why bringing back a beer from a hundred years ago is important and why people should try this. What would you say? Ah, uh, that's a, that's a, no pressure. That's a, it's a great question, Nick. <laughs> great question. And I think that it's really important for us to understand where we came from so that we can um, celebrate that and also improve on it. And um, that's what I'm hoping in the future is that we can all work together to enjoy a beer, talk about our own histories, talk about our own presence, and plan for a brighter future. Um, yeah. And so I'd really like that to happen with a scythe in hand. <laughs> yeah, and that's the cool thing about Black Point. If you could go out there, um, you know, it's an immigrant that built one of the most amazing mansions on Lake Geneva who faced discrimination, but also on the same hand, you know, he only employed Germans, you know, yep. for a lot of his help. So you get that balance. So I think that's a great way to look at it is let's celebrate the accomplishments. Yep. Let's be. And look towards a brighter future. That looking was forward to that. So. <laughs> so thank you so much. We're going to continue enjoying ours. Yes. <laughs> so cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers to you. Go to Black Point, see where Conrad lived. You can buy the beer there. We forgot that I was wondering, as a I, place. I I feel like you can get it at Black Point. Dave was screaming at the screen that <laughs> we're going to him. Tour, if you go on a tour, you can pick up a um, six pack at the um, gift shop. And yeah, and don't then, just show up. That doesn't work. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, tour. You got to go on a tour. <laughs> and you'll want to. <laughs> it's so cool. It's one of my favorite places. I know it sounds dumb to be like, go tour this old house. It's really interesting. But it's really interesting, but do it. and it's so beautiful. And, and it's, you don't have to love history like Nick. It's, no, it's still really, very, very interesting. interesting. The entire staff out there <laughs> does a great job of bringing the history of Conrad and what it was like at that time. And um, I think they do a great job of social challenges at that time mm -hmm. and historical context, bringing that to light and making it relevant to what we're facing today, yeah. which is a lot of stuff. <laughs> 
to a brighter future. <laughs> brighter future. So, Lauren, thank you so much. Thanks and, for your time, uh, Lauren. We'll be thank sure you. to talk soon. Yeah, have oh, a good one. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.